Good morning, everybody. I wanted to show you the difference today between a poster shop slash production house application versus the rip center. As you know, a couple of features are available in rip center, but are not available in rip center, but are available in the poster shop slash production house. So what you see here on the screen, I have two sessions. I have on the left the production house slash poster shop features and on the right side I have the RIP center. And I've opened up the Onyx quality test into the job editor. At the first side, you will the first step you will not see any difference there. You know, you have your printer set up and your uh, media groups and things like that. Um, go to the second tab, preview and size, preview and size. No, again, not, no difference there. Patterns here is the step and repeat. This is because I'm running a demo version. You will have that available here in the poster shop. On this side, you will not see it as Rip Center does not have the option for step and repeat. So in RIP Center default, there is no option for step and repeat. Then you have the tab tiling. Again, on this one, tiling, you see, it's the same. The only thing what you have here is tile map to actually create a PDF out of your tiling workflow. Then it comes more interesting into the fact of my color correction settings. Yeah, so my color correction here. First view, still OK, looks the same. If I go here, I have my settings to change things. Color replacement named colors and you already see this highlighted feature there of the spot layer tool is not available in Rip Center. So with the spot layer tool, I can actually add a white layer or a metallic or a varnish or a primer layer into a file which does not have it. It does not contain the data for a white. So if I go in here, I can say enable a spot channel and for example, do a fill image area. Yeah, so in this case, you will see everywhere where there is a, a, a dot. A white will be added. Here I have not I I'm not deciding where the white is going to be added. Is it going to be below or on top of the uh, of the image? That is what you do later in the printer settings, but here I can uh, turn it on. As you can see on the other one here, there is no spot layer tool available. So here in this case in the RIP Center, you have to, um, it has to be in your file. Okay, so that's that's one of the first things that you, you will notice with this RIP Center. Also, if I would go to named color replacements and I click on a color, that I want to replace, I can go here to all my Pantone colors. And, you know, if I have the, you know, the 539C, I can go here into swatch books and actually print this color off and decide which of these blocks I would like to have with the information, with the color information, because I'm happy, not happy with the color. Close this one off and go to the other one. If I have here the named color replacement, I can click on it. I can see, but you see there is no button for Swatchbooks as Swatchbooks is not supported in uh, the RIP Center. So in this case, I would have to change the color manually. I would have to know which of the recipe uh, to create this Pantone color is correct. So that is one of the things not possible with Ripset.
we'll go to finishing. You go to finishing on this side. You will immediately see that on this one you have two more uh, tabs here. One is called bleed. So with bleed, very simple, I can add a bleed area, so an overlap. You know, I want to print with slightly overlap. I can add a two millimeter session, two millimeter file, and it actually creates this around the file. You know, I can give it a color. So in this case, you see white, but I can also say, you know, I want to have the first pixel, which is a gray one. So in that case, it's adding a bleed of two millimeters. Now, what you can also do is create a canvas wrap around this. So in that case, my frame of the canvas is, let's say, 25 millimeters. I can select color, but I can also select a mirror. Now, in this case, in this example, the mirror is not a very good option because it, it does funny things. This is going to look weird on my canvas. I can also say, well, let's duplicate it, and then I'm adding a frame around it. Yeah, and in that case, I have marks available. I can do my corner marks, for example, for folding and cropping and things like that. Of course, on the canvas, I need to uh, make it possible to uh, have an, uh, a trim box area to mount it on the back side of the canvas. So let's say we do a 40 millimeter. Now I can have a 40 millimeter white area for the back of the canvas. Uh, to mount it on my uh, aluminium or uh, wooden frame because uh, there is no need for for ink there. If I look on the other one, rip center, there is no bleed available. So in this case, all these options that you see here, it is not possible to create this. Yeah. Same thing with uh, with with the grommets. Let's put this one uh, back on zero and back on zero and turn my bleed off. So I'm now we're in the normal file again. So now I can go to grommets. Uh, those are the, the eyes, the circles that you add. And you can see them here. If I'm going to change uh, the color, I'm going to say white here. So it's even more. Let's do it like this and make them a little bit bigger so you will actually see them in here. Uh, why this may be not after all the best solution. So let's turn them black and you know I can choose here for spacing. So every 30 centimeters, 300 millimeter or I can decide I want to have a quantity. And I want to have, you know, three there and I want to have this is also based on quantity. I want to have three there. Slightly too big. Let's make them 50 millimeters. Now, of course, they're inside my image, which I don't want. I want to have them outside the image. To be able to do that, I have to create a bleed box around it. So I'm going to say go back to my bleed. I'm going to enable. I don't want any. I don't want to have any overlap or anything like that, but I want to have a trim box outside. I don't want to have marks there. So now I created a box around it. Go back to grommets and say place the grommets in the bleed area. So now it's going to be in the bleed area. It's always uh, put on the page uh, calculated from the middle. So if you have three, it's calculated from the middle. And on the height it's the same. Now I can say also here I've added those. If I go to marks, I actually can say, you know, I want to create a tile cut outline path. So there is no cutting path in this file, but say I'm doing a lot of these uh, these grommets uh, on a on a certain media. I want to also cut that on my cutter. I can go into general tile outline, go in here and say I want to have that on my bleed box. And you will see the red line here is now appearing, so I'm now be able to cut on the outside. Yeah, so uh, if I want to add a label, I can add a label in here. 
in here. It's called label outline. And it's going to put a label here where you have decided here, what do you want to put there? Yeah, do I want to have the order number, company name, customer name, things like that? I can have my own logo or I can have a QR code created by Onyx that says what are these uh, parameters in the file? Now, if I go to this, uh, the RIP Center, you see here, I have these marks. I can do a label in here. I can do a setup, same thing. It looks a little bit uh, different, but it's, it's the same setup. And I can do here, generate tile cut line out pads. And that's all I can do. So again, post version, bleed and grommets extra. Uh, one of the things that I want to mention when you when you have this, remember when I uh, when I talked about this this spot layer tool. Yeah, uh, sometimes what happens is that in the file, the, the actual naming of the file uh, is maybe, you know, the white is not called uh, spot one or white, but it's called maybe in your local language and a given name. You know, maybe the layer is called ABC. Yeah. Um, in Onyx, I can, in the Onyx poster shop, I can actually uh, map that color to the correct color. So I can go in here, print and media. It's a little bit hidden. I can go change profiles. I can go output. I can say spot channel replacement. And I now can say, you know, ABC is my spot one color. So whenever there's an ABC coming in, I can, it will be automatically replaced by uh, by the poster shop in this way. Um, if I go that to the RIP Center and I actually go to here, I would say change profiles, I would go output, and you see that spot channel replacement button is not there. So you have to make sure that the spot is called spot one to be able to recognize in the RIP Center and that is also said if your RIP Center supports this printer with white or metallic or varnish. Yeah, in um, in the products we work, a RIP Center supports a printer level one. In Poster Shop, you support a printer level one and two. This can all be found in our website. Uh, but if you have a printer supported by RIP Center that is able to print white or metallic or anything like that, you have to make sure that the file contains the correct name. Okay, so I hope this 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 helped a bit in a way that you can see the differences, uh, what it makes uh, the poster shop uh, much better option with much more options to compare to the uh, to the rip center, which is uh, a default package. Thank you very much. Bye bye.